Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome back to our Eureka from Scratch series, where we're just taking a look at what it's like to do Eureka after the Stormblood expansion. You know, some people want to go back and work on a Stormblood relic, or maybe get some of the glamour items that are in there, and they gotta know how it actually is to do it nowadays. And we're already on part three of the series, where we're gonna be taking a look at the third zone, Pyros. Now, if you haven't seen the first two parts, be sure to check those out. Also, check the description for resources. There's a tracker down there with all sorts of links, things that are going to be very important for this video in particular. And there's also going to be a playlist of some of my old videos that, while still are actually pretty relevant when it comes to figuring out what you're gonna be doing in these zones. Now, before we get into the details of Pyros in particular, I like to say how long it took me to get through the zone, and it took me about 10 hours to finish Pyros. Now, that included finishing leveling, which in this case, the level cap is elemental level 50, a single weapon, although there's a bit of a caveat to that, and a whole set of armor, because Pyros actually has a set of armor that you can just make in this. You don't need anything prior. You can just make it once you meet certain requirements inside the zone. Now, quite frankly, this should have taken less time, and I'll explain why a little bit later in the video, but I got some bad RNG and hopefully none of you experienced that. This could have been done in like seven hours, to be honest. So take it what it is. Took me 10. It might take you less. So now every video, I kind of start talking about how I approached the zone and Animos and Pagos were kind of similar, only making note that Pagos was a little bit more monster dense and a little bit more brutal. Pyros carries over a lot of ideas from Pagos. It's got the aggro types, mutations, adaptations, even special lock boxes, although now they're called heat warped boxes this time around but really it has a lot of new stuff that makes your approach towards it completely different from the way you approach Pagos. Now, one of the first things I needed to consider when going into Pyros, something I really didn't have to consider much past Onimos was a budget. Now, in the first video, I recommend buying a body piece, but really that's the only gill that I've ever recommended you actually spend, uh, noting some other items that you could pick up from monsters, but, I actually felt like I needed a budget for Pyros, and that's because of a new system in this place called Logos Actions. They're basically extra actions that are incredibly powerful, game-breaking level actions we're talking about here. They just let you approach 14 in a way that you can't really experience anywhere else in the game. Now, these are obtained by appraising a new item called a Logogram at Drake, one of the NPCs inside, after you do a few quests. The game will actually take you on a pretty straightforward tutorial of this when you get into Pyros, and these Logograms that you trade him give you actions that you can then actually craft into usable skills, and you can earn them all throughout the zone. Fortunately, that tracker that I included in the description has detailed accounts of which logograms make which actions and how to obtain all of them. It even lets you track which logograms you've actually made, which will be important for some of the items you have to make. Now you can actually sell and purchase these items on the market board. So I actually went in and purchased a few of some of the cheaper ones. Uh, I did not have that much gill on this character, but I knew that I could actually make a gill inside Eureka. So I, I spent another maybe like 300, 400 K. So we're looking at about 500,000 gill that I've spent on the behemoth server on this character. And to be honest, this was really just to save time. If you want to save time, even make some money while looking for these things, there are ways to obtain them that just, just take a little more time. That's all you're going to need. Now, while the actions themselves are cool, we have a couple of main considerations with them. For one, you actually need to have a minimum number of actions made in order to make the weapon and obtain the armor. So you need 30 of these actions out of the 50 that are in this zone in order to finish a weapon and you'll need all 50 of the Pyros actions to be able to purchase Pyros armor, which will show off a bit later. Now, while again, there's tons of great Logos actions, there are so many unique things that you can do with them. For the sake of this series, we were only looking at one specific action, and that is Reflect. This allows you to bounce magical attacks back to who or whatever casted it for 10 seconds. Now this can mean your party members like regen or curing you, but more importantly, it can mean enemy spells, which we're gonna be abusing to get through Pyros really quickly. So in order to make Reflect, you'll need the Protect L, Shell L, and Wisdom of Ordained actions in your crafting menu. Now this will take fundamental, mitigative, and curative logograms respectively. These are the things I spent Gil on, and the most expensive one ended up being Curative. Uh, I bought like 10 to 15 of each. It just depends. Sometimes you get more or less like ordained or more or less protect or shell, and you can earn more fundamentals and more mitigatives inside. So that Curative really becomes the one pigeonhole of this entire process. But if you are willing to spend the Gil on this, this will speed up your Pyros experience exponentially. 
So I made leveling top priority in Pyros. I wanted to get to elemental level 50 as quickly as possible. So in order to do that, I would find elementals and use reflect to kill them. Now there's a few things that you can do to really make this effective. For one, you wanna take off all your armor to increase the damage reflect does to the elementals. With reflect, it actually looks at the exact damage value you would have taken and then sends that value back to the caster. So if you're completely naked with your elemental board, your magia board set so that you take the maximum amount of damage, then you'll kill them a lot faster. It does also mean that if you make any mistakes, you are certainly dead. So you may want to practice this with your armor on at first and then take your armor off once you're sure you can commit the attention and get kind of into a rhythm of how to do it. Personally, I recommend reusing Reflect at two seconds left on its duration. Yeah, that means you really only get like eight and a half, nine seconds out of the 10 second total, but you do not want to play fast and loose with this. Trust me, I died like three or four times, even just leveling 250. So this, again, this could have been even quicker than the 10 hours, if, you know, forgetting the RNG that I mentioned earlier. Now, as for how many levels ahead of you you want these elementals to be, six levels is the optimal leveling range here. Uh, any more than that, like seven or eight, and the EXP gets gutted by like 90%. It's, it's insane how much less EXP eight levels higher than you is. Seven is okay and it's doable if you don't have any better options, but six is that prime number. Any less than that, and the EXP is still good, but it starts taking longer and longer to kill the monsters, meaning you'll use more and more reflects. And depending on how much gill you have and how much you spent on the uh, logograms, it may not really be within your budget, may not really be within your interest. Um, there are exceptions, which if I remember, we'll go over them, but it's one specific enemy type, really. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Now, as for how to find the elementals, the tracker has a map. Use that to find the elementals that spawn at what levels in what places. If I can make some extra recommendations, uh, the level 43 fire elementals by the Southern Etherite actually adapt 100% of the time, which makes them reward nearly a million EXP a kill. They also give mitigative logograms, one of the logogram types you actually need to make more reflect. So these are a great thing to go after, even if you're a little bit closer than six levels in range. Another great spot are the Thunder Elementals that spawn Floros on the east side of the map. There's like a dozen Elementals out there that spawn every three minutes, making it one of the best EXP sources early on. If you see other people there, don't be afraid to group up for reflect parties. You really only need one person, but it's better than nobody getting anything or people getting split EXP. It's totally okay to group up for reflect parties and to split the responsibility who gets which Elementals, figure something out like that. Another thing you can actually do with these Thunder Elementals, and actually the Thunder Elementals by another Notorious monster called Atollis, is you can actually kill them once you're a higher level, and if the Notorious monsters are up, you can level sync right as you land a killing blow to get some extra logograms. Uh, I believe these actually give fundamentals. Actually, I think these Thunder Elementals I'm mentioning in particular give mitigatives as well. So they are definitely worth going out of your way to try and obtain them. If there's an NM up and you want to kill a few of them and then level sync at the end, it's a lot like the light trick I showed in the Pagos video with the wolves. Um, it's the same practice and it can be very, very useful. Now you want to do that till about level 41 or 42, and then you're going to blow through the rest of Pyros at this point. There's an enemy called a White Flame that's level 48 over by the Northwest Etherite. You can stand in their AoEs, they attack you with water spells, you can reflect everything they have to throw at you. They even mutate in some weathers, which actually slows down the kill speed, but increases the EXP gain by a lot if you happen to get the right weather. These white flames, I think I did until level 47, even though I was only two levels behind them, 46 to 47 was just so quick on these things. Nothing else even remotely compared. One additional piece of advice for Reflect, Elementals Agro Magic. Reflect is magic, which means you can actually use it to pull the elementals without having to actually hit them. This is especially important on thunder elementals because they use shock spikes. Do not accidentally continue auto attacking uh, shock elementals, thunder elementals when you actually pull them because you will kill yourself off that. Another thing is that reflect takes a second to activate when you cast it. So don't Pull elementals with reflect unless you already have reflect up. You're going to want to cast reflect out of aggro range of the elementals, then go in and pull them with reflect or use reflect again. And that can be a little tedious, but it's better than just walking into a group, casting reflect and instantly dying because their spells are faster than your reflect. 
And after you're 47, really, you can just worry about leveling off NMs for the rest. You really want to hit 49 as quickly as possible, because if Penthesilia spawns, the boss of this zone, you want to be able to get the flames for your relic weapon. So my goal was really to get the 49, but once I hit 47, I ended up just leveling off Notorious Monsters the rest of the way. I took the opportunity to spawn lower level Notorious Monsters, obtain Pyros Crystals, and that worked out fine. If you want, you can still kill monsters two levels over you, exactly like I did in the previous two zones, and that'll work out just fine. Now I mentioned the kill monsters two levels above you thing. If there's no elementals up that are a good level range for you, you can do the same thing you've been doing in the previous zones. You can also do the Southern elemental conflict. You can make some gill or maybe get some curative or protective or offensive logograms off that. The XP is not bad, not great, but not bad. And with that, yeah, just try to get to 49 so you can get those Penthesilia rewards as quickly as possible. It's a lot like the previous zones. You're going to need crystals and you're going to need the item off the final boss. Now, the reason why my weapon actually took 10 hours was because the game didn't spawn Penthesilia for 10 hours. She requires heat waves in order to spawn. There were no heat waves for 10 hours on one of the days I played. It only took me 10 hours to finish the whole thing. So seven hours out of those 10 hours, I couldn't even spawn Penthesilia, which is why I say it could have taken a significantly less period of time. All in all, you need 750 Pyros Crystals and five Penthesilia Flames. And similarly to Louie and Pazuzu, if you don't have Penthesilia Flames, you can always get extra Pyros Crystals and exchange those for Flames as well. Uh, she gives you three of them, and then she also drops 40 Crystals. So you really, really wanna make sure that you get Penthesilia once you hit 49. On top of that, the armor, once you have all 50 Logos actions from Pyros itself, um, costs 40 Pyros crystals per piece. So if you're ignoring the fact that you might have an Osode or a, a Vermilion Cloak, that's 200 per entire set, which really doesn't take that long. Other than that, like Pyros is really, really straightforward. Reflect and then kill NMs. Like that's all you need to do. There, You can experiment with some of the other Logos actions and try to have a little bit of fun with them. There's plenty of great OP combinations online. But the only other thing you can really do is like maybe try to make some gill. I already mentioned the bunny fate like Pyros, the elemental uh, conflict or like Pagos, I mean. But there's also NMs, uh, a few of them that have specific item drops. So Lame Bricks, Yin Yang, and Skull all drop like a, like a dice, a tissue, and a claw. Those are actually used as part of a quest to unlock a sixth Magicite, which is largely unnecessary unless you plan on doing a lot of Eureka content for months and months and months, even as Bajja comes out. Um, most people sell those. They're worth a very big chunk of change for the most part. So you may want to consider doing either of those. Try to go to those NMs and spawn those NMs whenever you possibly can. There's also a wind-up Elvon from Lumberjack. I don't remember how much that goes for, if that's expensive or if it's just something that you want to collect, but that's another thing to consider as well. I, I didn't really focus on these. I, I fought them a bunch, but it just wasn't a major thing that I went after. And with that, that's all I really have to say to Pyros. The, the reflect farming is just, trust me, you're going to fall in love with it. It's, it's a lot of fun and it goes super, super quick. And the good news is the Hydatos video is going to be kind of similar to this uh, with just a few more grievances that Hydatos has. And also we have to check out Baldessian Arsenal, which could probably be our fifth and final video of this series. But that's it for Pyros. Good luck. Go reflect. Go buy some logos. Go reflect and have a good time. So thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe and share and stay tuned for more of the Eureka series as we wrap up with Hydatos. As of this recording, I've already finished the weapon, actually. I've already finished Hydatos almost in its entire entirety other than Baldessian Arsenal, so probably look at that video later this week. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one, and until then, take care.